Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another uh, The Ones Who Live video. So, I want to talk about uh, Morgan's return, because I do think that The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, did hint at Morgan's return, uh, I guess to The Walking Dead universe just in general. As you know, Morgan's story on Fear the Walking Dead ended with him talking on the walkie-talkie. He was trying to reach out to Rick Grimes, and he said, this message is for Rick Grimes. I don't know where you are, but I'm going to try and find you, basically, is what he said. And the first place he was going was Alexandria, and then we'll kind of see where they go from that point on. But that seems to be where he's going. That's sort of where Morgan's story ends, is he's out there looking for Rick. And how sad would it be if that was just sort of the end of Morgan's story, is he's out there looking for Rick, and that was just kind of a question we're always going to have. Like, is he ever going to find Rick, right? Well, in The Ones Who Live, in, in a scene actually between uh, Okafor, Pearl Thorne, as well as Rick Grimes, there's a book in the scene here that is actually, it has a very strong connection to Morgan, and I do think is an Easter egg here to, to Morgan's return. So let's talk about this here. So before we go any further, obviously, make sure to be a subscriber if you want to get all my Walking Dead The Ones Who Live content like this. There's going to be so much to talk about after this. I will be doing my opening credits breakdown because there's a bunch of stuff that they released in the opening credits. Or not a bunch of stuff they released, but there's a lot of Easter eggs in the opening credits. So I, I want to break down all of that there. There's actually something in the opening credits that I'll mention in this video that I think also hints at Morgan's return. Because there's something in there that they acknowledge it is something that the CRM are very aware of. And as we know, on Fear the Walking Dead, Morgan has encountered the CRM a lot of times already. So... It almost makes a lot of sense for Morgan to return. Probably not this season, but if there's a cliffhanger at the end, then that would make a lot of sense, right? Then that would hype up a season two. Not to mention, Carol mentioned in Daryl Dixon that someone came back and we're all debating on, on who that was. It didn't really make a lot of sense for it to be Rick and Michonne just based off of her tone. But if she just kind of said, you know, Morgan came back, that just makes a lot of sense. Carol and Morgan were very close, right, during season seven and eight. So I don't think it would be Dwight that would come back. I think it makes sense that Morgan came back, especially because of where Fear the Walking Dead ended. He was on his way to Alexandria and to go and search for Rick. I just think timeline-wise, all of this makes so much sense. But let's get into what I wanted to talk about here. And uh, I'll leave a link down below to this article here because this is actually where I saw this. I noticed the thing in the opening credits, but I didn't actually catch the book here. Like this reference here is honestly amazing and yeah big shout out to comicbook.com for finding this this is incredible so in this scene right here we have uh okafor obviously bringing uh rick grimes and pearl thorn to this secret location here and i think this is where they were going to build a new base or maybe they're just like uh, meeting up here i'm not entirely sure where they actually built their new base maybe it wasn't in this place but this was a place that they were coming to check out and uh yeah okafor talked to them about you know the meaning of just sort of everything in general and this is sort of i guess the very early moments of this rebellion forming, uh, you know, uh, of the CRM, which I'm going to do a video on this, you know, separately. But, you know, Okafor's vision on all of this here is very, very important. You know, he wants the CRM to succeed. He wants the CRM to, you know, be a place that, you know, would be really amazing for everyone. But it kind of needs to change from within. And he wants Rick and Pearl to, to help him with that. The only problem with that is Okafor died at the end of this episode. So does Rick carry on his vision? Does he try to make the CRM a better place? Or does he leave with Michonne? Because now Michonne has is, is shown up, right? So I think that's where there's going to be some conflict here. But I do think, you know, knowing Rick Grimes and also knowing Michonne, I think, I mean, first of all, Rick might just be like, no, let's just go. And Michonne might be like, we can't do that. That's not us. We have a chance to help these people here. We have a chance to make this better. We're going to do this, right? And so I wonder if that is sort of where, where the season ends here. But anyways, in this scene, Okafor gives this book here to, to Rick and Pearl and the book is called The Art of Peace, and so this book right here was actually the same book that, that Morgan had in Season 6 of The Walking Dead. I, I believe it was Season 6. Yeah, it was Season 6. It was the, it was the episode with, with uh, Eastman, which I think, you know, the fact that Okafor is trying to teach this to Rick and to Pearl, I think says everything about the character. Honestly, Okafor seemed like a villain at first, but over the course of this episode, yes, there is still some things there. He's done some really bad things, but you can kind of see you know, I guess where his values are. You can kind of see a lot about the character. Like he has a book like this. There's certain things he's trying to teach them. Like he is trying to make the world a better place. Like he he really is. He's done some really messed up things, but he's not really corrupt in, in the sense of, you know, what Major General Beale is doing. Like he's trying to actually fix a lot of this here, but he's trying to teach this to Rick and Pearl, you know, and that's one thing that really helped Morgan a lot, you know, and why have this in the episode if it's not, you know, entirely connected with Morgan, right? Obviously this isn't the same book that Morgan had or anything like that but they knew what they were doing when they had that book in this scene it wasn't just like random right like this is an easter egg to that same book that they had in the walking dead 
not only that, if you go to the opening credits here, there's actually a shot here where you do see like Omaha and you'll see Portland and obviously the hidden city of, uh, I guess, Philadelphia, like the CRM. You don't see that here. But if you look at the very bottom where Texas is, there's actually like this radioactive symbol or whatever, basically, because obviously on Fear the Walking Dead, a nuke went off, right? A nuke actually went off. And basically, like, that area there, you can't live there, right? Which confirms to us that the CRM are very, very aware of what happened. And so they know that that's not a place that you can really go to, right? But it is significant enough to actually include on the opening credits. Like, it's not, obviously, if something crazy like that happens, like a nuke going off, right? They're going to be aware of that. Obviously, they're going to. But I'm more focusing on it in terms of the writing perspective. Like, writing the show and coming up with the opening credits to include this as something, you know, no noteworthy here to show us is very interesting, you know? You don't have to show us this. I'm sure there's been other things that have happened, right? But they actually put this on here as something that, you know, might actually play a role in the future or it might be a little Easter egg or a hint at something because you know how Gimple works. Like, it's usually always hints at something. It, it never really makes sense. It's always just like a hint at something, you know, like fans will be really excited about this thing. It doesn't really necessarily mean anything, but it'll just like hint at the character's return or something like that. But it doesn't mean that it's actually going to play a role in the story kind of thing, right? And so I wonder, you know, does this actually hint at Morgan's return? Does it make sense for Morgan to actually return here? I think it does. It really does. You know, like Morgan is out there searching for Rick. And I just feel like it, it makes so much sense to have the character come back. And, you know, he could play a big role in season two. And I, I just think about the way that this show can go. And that's the thing. I'll, I'll talk about this right now. Like last night was incredible. And again, it was just the first episode. This is going to build episode to episode until we get to the finale of the season. But The Ones Who Live was just massive. Like, like, everyone's talking about it people who haven't watched the walking dead in a long time have been watching it it's honestly been everywhere and i haven't seen the walking dead like this in years and you know amc i feel like is going to look at this and be like yeah we need to do more this can't just be it right like we need to do another season maybe it doesn't come out till late 2025 or 2026 or something but we need to do another season right like we have the other spinoff shows in between we can sort of tease the next season here and there also, the other spinoff shows, they're, they're going to get more exciting and all that, right? Especially Daryl Dixon with the Varian Walkers and stuff. So I feel like there's no way you can end it right away just because of how, you know, everyone's talking about the show right now. So after season one's tremendous success, if you were to make a season two, how would they make season two bigger? Well, you add Morgan to it, right? And then if they were to do a season three, how would you make a season three bigger? And then that's where you bring back all the characters and then maybe you wrap up this whole story, right? Like do three seasons of a TV show instead of three movies. And that's the one thing I will point out as well. You know, episode two is is airing next week or this Sunday, I guess. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but obviously it's going to focus a lot on Michonne's perspective. But I will say, you know, a lot of people made the argument that those six episodes were basically replacing the Rick movie trilogy. And I've always said that you know, pacing wise, it's not going to be the same. You can't just take two episodes of a TV show and make that a movie. That makes no sense. So I do think after we watch this one and we combine episode one and two together, you know, we should ask the question, does that make a good movie? I would argue no, like really not. The first episode here, honestly, is a good like setup for like half of a movie kind of anyways. Like, honestly, it really is set up for a whole TV show. Like what we just watched was a lot of Rick talking about his backstory and we're seeing a bunch of stuff like how it built up to his reunion with Michonne. But I don't think you could do that in a movie where you talk about, you know, this his whole backstory for 45 minutes. People would get very, very bored. Again, movie pacing is so fast, like it, it goes at a totally different pace. So that's why I feel like all six episodes here would be a movie. It's like Daryl Dixon, like you couldn't take two episodes and make a movie. All six episodes of the Daryl Dixon show, like season one. That would make a great movie. Same with uh, Dead City as well. The whole entire arc would make a perfect movie, and that's what would be a very successful movie. So that's why I think they went to a TV show, because The Walking Dead, they really like to live in the moment for a while, right? Like, you have these long, drawn-out scenes, and you really just, like, you spend a lot of time with the characters and stuff. It works best with TV shows, and that's why I think there should be a second season, and that's why you should bring Morgan back, and I think that some of this here could have been hinting at this. Now, Gimple did say that there, there was going to be some returning characters, and so... Obviously, after episode one, we didn't see anyone. There was no returning character from, like, anything on The Walking Dead or anything like that. And I'm not including flashback stuff. Like, if you're doing a flashback to something, then that really does not count at all. Will there be something in episode two? Probably not. I'm assuming there's not going to be anything in episode two. Uh, three? There could be something, maybe. But I know in four, there won't be for sure, because that one seems to really focus on Rick and Michonne. 
So then we only have episode five and six. And so that is where things are debatable. But if there's a returning character from The Walking Dead in episode five and six, then like that's I think that confirms to me that it's going to happen in the finale. Right. And remember, Gimple said something like it's not who you would expect. Right. Because I think he was asked about like world beyond characters specifically if they would show up here. And it was something like, you know, it's not it's like, yeah, that's expected, but it's more of the unexpected or, or something like that. So I'm just assuming it's going to be a Walking Dead character. Is it Morgan? It could be Morgan. And maybe Morgan shows up at the very, very end. I could see that happening because the one thing with like predictions that I make and stuff, I've I've been more like wrong in recent years, I would say, uh, you know, just because it's been so hard to predict where this story is going to go overall. But I know a lot of Gimple storytelling. And again, my predictions could still be so, so off. I'm not saying that I'm right on anything like I'm not saying that at all. But I just I know that he likes to leave things on cliffhangers like there, there's that aspect to it that makes it so exciting that you need to see more. You really need to see more. Right. So I just feel like this is going to end in a way where, yes, Rick and Michonne are reunited. They're together and all of that. That's awesome. But there's going to be something with the story that it ends on a cliffhanger. And I just think Morgan, you know, his return, that is just like, oh, how how perfect is that? Imagine the excitement online. Like just maybe it's a post credit scene. Maybe he shows up and they do something where Rick looks and he sees Morgan again. They do something like that. I don't know if they would do that. Honestly, it'd probably be a post credit scene where the story ends in some way. But then obviously we see Morgan and maybe I don't know. I don't know what the post credit scene could be, but. That would just be really incredible. Do something similar to what you did with Carol, right, at the end of Daryl Dixon. Because that, that post credit scene was just absolutely exciting. It was, I mean, it was a post credit scene, but it kind of wasn't a post credit scene. Honestly, I think they should do more, more post credit scenes. It, like, they add the moment to the end of, 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 like, the episode. But it's not as exciting. Just have the episode end in a certain way. Have the credits roll. And everyone's like, oh, wow, whatever. And then you get the post credit scene of like Morgan shows up or whatever. And it's like, whoa, right? To me, that is just way more exciting. But I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to leave it here. Post all your thoughts down below. Do you think Morgan is going to show up in The Ones Who Live at all this season? Or do you think that this is all more set up for a season two? Post all your thoughts down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.